The scratch pad is a pretty straightforward feature within Studio One 4. So this video won't be too long, but um, I still wanted to put this together in case you were not familiar with it and uh, just show you really quickly some of the features here. So the scratch pad is going to allow us to store events uh, or MIDI parts or entire song sections if we're working with the arranger track um, or allow us to experiment with different ideas within our song. Now we can access or create a scratch pad by coming up to the top here and clicking on this button. And then we can see we have a scratch pad that's been opened up. We have a border here separating it from our main arrange view. And the scratch pad is gonna have the same editing capabilities as the arrange view, as well as the same tracks. And you can see we just have two here that are represented here. And I have an, a loop here, so an audio event and a MIDI part. And one thing to keep in mind is that you need to pay attention to the focus. So right now we are focused on the scratch pad. And if I were to press the space bar to begin playback, then we can see we are playing back within our scratch pad. I'll go ahead and stop that playback. Now, if I click in the ruler for our arrange view, we can see our focus is uh, switched back here. And if I press space bar, then we begin playback there. So just know that if you are experimenting with some ideas and wanted to play them back, the transport will then uh, be controlling the scratch pad as long as you have this selected up above. And we can see that we actually have a loop function that's available, available by default. It's going to be set on four bars, but we can resize that to be whatever we'd like. And while the scratch pad is active, we can use the loop button down below to deactivate it if we'd like. If we'd like to hide that scratch pad that's been created, we would just go ahead and click on the icon up above and it may seem like it's just completely gone, but it is still there. So if we click again up above that returns and so we can drag audio events and MIDI parts and they will be copied or duplicated. And we can see that here we can move these about as we would in the arrange view. We can drag our MIDI part over there and just store these in the scratch pad or experiment. And something to keep in mind is that if we were to delete the audio event here or the MIDI part from our arrange view, I'll go ahead and do that. Then it will not delete the copy that's been made in our scratch pad. I'll control Z to bring that MIDI part back. And I'm actually going to select these and delete them out. And we can see that these remain in our arrange view. Now, if we were working with the arranger track, I'll go ahead and activate that and just double click to add a segment here or a section. And we can actually drag these over to the scratch pad as well. And that will be duplicated. But we also have the option, particularly with the sections in the arrange track in that if I go ahead and delete these out and then hold alt or option on the Mac while dragging that to our scratch pad, it's going to completely remove it from our arrange view. And then I'll drag that back over and then we can see that that actually duplicates it when we bring it back to our arrange view. We can create multiple scratch pads by coming to this triangle here, clicking, and let's say we'll add a scratch pad. And then now we have a fresh one to work with. If we again click on the triangle, we can come back to our original scratch pad one. And these can also be renamed to help you identify. So while we're on scratch pad one, I will click on the rename. I'll just call that test one. Okay. And then let's select our scratch pad two. rename that test two. Okay. And then now when we click on the triangle, we have something that's going to be a bit more identifiable, identifiable if you're working with multiple uh, pads here, let's come back to that first test one. We could have also duplicated this original uh, scratch pad by clicking on duplicate. And now we have a third one that has the MIDI part and audio event already contained within it. And if we come back up above, we can see that we have 
three of these now. This is the one that we latest, that we uh, most recently added. We have similar zoom controls. So down at the bottom, we can zoom in or out or use the ruler to accomplish the same thing. And I am working on a laptop with a smaller resolution. It's a 15 inch monitor or screen. So the things are a little bit tight or cramped here, but if you're working on a larger monitor, you're gonna have more space, of course. But we do have this border here that we can hover over. We have the double arrows and we can then resize as we wish below there. Now, if we'd like to remove one of these pads that we've added, then we would just be sure that we have it selected, come back up to the triangle and then delete scratch pad we can see now we only have these two. We're on scratch pad three. Let's go ahead and delete that out. And let's delete our original test one. And now we can see we are back to our original range view. And the icon actually has changes here when there is not a scratch pad within the song. So we see this little plus icon. And if I go ahead and add that again, you can see that that changes. So even if we click to hide that, you can tell by looking at this icon here that we do have a scratch pad within this song and we just access it by clicking on it. I'll go ahead and delete that out. So if you are someone who ends up with a lot of parts and events within your song and you may push them out to the back of your song, this could be an option for you and a different way that you can store those parts until you need them and just hide the scratch pad when you don't need it and open it up when you do and bring those events and parts into your main song here.